What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So sometimes there's an extension that comes along that has so many features that I actually struggle to figure out how to talk about the whole thing inside of a video. Um, today's extension is one of those. It's an extension for creating railings inside of SketchUp. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so today's extension is Instant Fence and Railing. This was voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Um, big thanks to my supporters on Patreon for voting. Um, one of the perks of supporting the channel on Patreon is you get to vote on the extension that I cover every week. So if that's something you're interested in, I will link to that in the notes down below. But basically what this tool is, this, this is a tool contained inside of the Valley Architects um, Instant Architecture um, set of extensions. So you can either get Instant Architecture with all of these different extensions, Instant Rove, uh, instant roof, instant road, door and window, all these different extensions for um, $118 a year, which is less than $10 a month. Um, and that gets you access to everything on this list. If you do only want instant fence and railing, then that's going to be less expensive. I think that's going to be $26 a year or something like that. Um, usually if you get instant fence and railing, a lot of the time you're going to want to combine that with instant stair. So if you put those together, that's going to be a little bit, a little bit more expensive, but I would note that if you're going to do that, it really just makes sense for you to do the entire suite because this is uh, one of the best architectural tool sets that I've used for SketchUp. I'm not an affiliate for them or anything like that. It's literally just there's so many different amazing tools contained inside of here for less than $10 a month. I, I personally find that to be a really great value. But again, that's up to you. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at what this can do. So let's jump back into SketchUp really quick. So if you have both of these, there will be a toolbar for instant fence and for instant stair. If you just have instant fence, then you're just going to look for instant fence. It actually took me a minute because I was actually looking for instant railing in here and it's called instant fence. Um, but the way this works is it's pretty cool. Um, so what you do is you have a series of lines right here. So let's say we have two lines like this one and you put them in a group and it's going to use the lines as a path in order to create a railing. Um, so we'll talk in a second about how to do that with a singular line because um, that gets a little bit tricky, but let's not worry about it for right now. So um, what we want to do is we've got our path right here, right? It's a simple line and a simple line. And so when you want to add a railing, you can just click on the button for make fence or railing in order to do that. You want to make sure you have that selected before you do this. But then what we want to do is let's just take a look at some of our options. So if we click the drop down right here, there's options in here for banisters, uh, metal and wood fencing, railings, and miscellaneous, as well as some user defined stuff. Let's click on the all button right now because then we can click on this little button with little boxes and take a look at what's included. So you can see how there's just a massive library of different fencing and railing styles, right? So you've got like fencing that you might use in like a garden or a yard or something like that, as well as a ton of different kinds of railings. So like aluminum balcony railings, um, you've got glass railings contained in here. You've got uh, like single line railings like this one. So just like an iron handrail. And you can see there's just a ton of different options in here. So you can see how there's multiple different kinds of fences for most any style and then within those you can also customize and adjust um, the different parts and pieces of these. So let's go ahead and let's add something. So let's say along this line that we have selected right here, let's say we want to add a fence. So let's pick, we'll just pick the standard fence right here just to give that a look. So we're going to click on that. Once you've selected it, you can click the X right here in order to get back in here to adjust your settings. So notice how there's options in here for edit the existing style or you can create your own. Um, so if you do have something that you create custom that you want to save for later, you can name that in here and um, you can add that to the library. In this case, we're going to say yes, edit the style. Um, I'm going to say make overall group, yes. If you don't do that, then the uh, the vertical pieces will be in there separate from the horizontal pieces. So usually I like to make them overall as a group. So you could either make this as a fence right here, or you could also, so we could go ahead and make it just like this. Notice how when I click, that's going to place this in here like this, and it places a detailed fence. Um, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to reselect this and let's go through our options again, but this time I'm going to click on the button for parameters. And so notice how when I click on the button for parameters, there's a ton of different options in here for things we can do to adjust our fence. So for example, there's options in here for the parameters of what this might do with a slope. So you can set it to step 
or to follow a slope or a terrain, um, which we can take a look at a little bit more in a second. Um, there's actually a wobble option in here, which I didn't realize. You can add a little bit of like randomness to this. Uh, we're not gonna do that right here, but that's an interesting setting. But then when you scroll down, notice how there's a ton of different settings that you can use in order to um, customize the way the fence looks. So for example, this is just gonna work the same way as before. You can set different posts in here. So notice how when I mouse over these, it's gonna show me different kinds of posts that are in here. So this one in general with this style of fence is going to give you just like kind of a typical re rectangle or a square. If you did wanna customize this to something else, there are other options in here. For now, we're just gonna leave that one as is cause it makes sense. But you can adjust things like the width of those posts. So if you want those to be six inches instead of four inches, you could change those right here. You can also set your spacing. So if you wanted these every like four feet or every 10 feet, you could adjust those um, in this uh, menu as well. And then you can also set the way that the posts align with your fence. So it gives you some kind of like visual representations of how that would work. That's more if your fence is going to follow a more complex path like this one. We're not gonna worry too much about that for right now. But then if we scroll down, notice how there's also options in here for your rails. So you can click in here and see how your rails are gonna be placed in here. You can set them either between the posts or in front of your posts, depending on what you're trying to do. There's also handrail options, which we're not gonna worry too much about because this one really shouldn't have a handrail. So I'm actually gonna uncheck that right here. But then the fencing itself, you can also set the style of the fencing that's in here. So previously, right, we just had this in there as kind of like the standard boards on horizontal runners. Well, what we can do instead is let's select the option for the dog-eared right here and just see what that does. So, and then there's the panels down below, which we're not gonna worry too much about for right now. Um, that would work good for like stair railings and stuff. But I'm gonna click on the button for make fence. Well now, notice how this asks me for an offset point. That's just asking which direction the fence should be facing. So if you wanted the wood to be facing outward, you could click over here. But then what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you an overall takeoff, um, giving you the number of posts, the uh, rail material length, as well as the number of vertical pickets. When we click on this, notice what that's going to do is that's gonna give us that dog-eared look in here. So because we selected that setting, that's put that in here um, and it's got boards on both sides. And there's some settings things that you'd probably wanna adjust a little bit, like how far back this is. But overall, this gave us a great fence using those settings. So you can either customize those or you can come in here and you can add or you can just use the presets in order to quickly add fences. And so this will work on things like arcs, but one of the things that you're probably gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna divide the arc like this into multiple pieces, and then you're gonna wanna select it and make it a group, um, because this really only understands arcs and curves and things when you add them in as a group. But now, all we have to do is select this group, run instant fence, and let's select a different fence style. In this case, I think I'm gonna pick the bamboo fence style right here, so the bamboo one. Then I'm just gonna close out of this. I'm not gonna worry about my parameters for right now. I'm gonna click on make fence. And again, remember that's gonna ask me which direction I want that to be facing. And I'm gonna select the out button like this. And so notice what that does is that generates that fence and that fence follows along with the curve that we have in here. So once you get the like grouping figured out for how you um, create your paths that these go along, this is actually really easy to use. Um, what I did wanna talk about just for a second is say that you have an individual line like this one. Um, so it's not gonna work on just a singular edge, right? So if I try to run this, it's gonna give me an error message. Um, and I can't put just a singular edge in a group like this. So I can't just right click and put it in a group because there's only one thing. SketchUp's like, what are you trying to group? You only have one thing. And so the best way to do this is going to be to just right click on your edge and just divide it. And you can just divide it into two segments and then put them into a group. Just right click and put them in a group. Then this ought to run just fine. So if we were to select like the highway railing that's in here or something like that, let's pick, let's pick this modern railing actually and click on make fence. Then that's gonna create that really quickly. That's gonna work just fine. And so one of the cool things about this is if you couple this with instant stair, so um, what I've done is I've created a stair right here. Let's actually recreate this. So I'm just gonna click on the button for stair from standard shape. Um, I'm gonna pick this preset right here. 
for the simple curb. But then if I go down into my parameters, there's an option in here for railing lines. And so if you include the railing lines, what that's going to do is that's going to generate those lines as a part of your stair. And so when you generate those as a part of your stair, then it's really easy to add railings using instant railing. So if I click on make stair and then click, that's going to place my stair right here. Well, notice how those lines are in here as groups. And so because they're in here as groups and then within that, these edges are actually considered curves. Now I can just select them. So if I click on this one right here, I can run instant fence and I'm going to pick, let's go with, let's go with this fancy rail right here. So I'm going to pick this fancy rail, click on make fence. And that's going to create that fence along that line. So super easy, super intuitive. I don't have to do a whole bunch of adjustments in here to make that work. Now I will note that the, these bases aren't following along with this surface right here. I'm not 100% sure if there's anything you can do about that. Um, I haven't gotten that far into it um, from a detail standpoint, but overall, if you're just looking to create something like this that visually indicates what your stair might look like, this is like massively easy and also a lot of fun. So let's say we're to create a different kind of stair. So let's go with a spiral stair. So we'll pick one of these guys right here. We'll pick this stair. We'll click on make stair. Uh, we wanna make sure that railing lines is selected. But then if I click on make stair, that's gonna generate that stair right here. And again, it's got those lines already created. So then I can use instant fence and I can pick a railing. So in this case, let's say for this one that we wanted to add Maybe this iron with wood posts right here. So we could select that, click on make fence. It's gonna add that in here. So again, really easy to use. Um, there's not, like, I'm not going in and doing a whole bunch of setup or anything like that. I'm literally just selecting the edges and clicking on make fence. So now I will tell you, I'm not 100% sure how well that would work with something that isn't created with instant stair, which again is another reason that I usually recommend to people that they um, get the whole Valley Architect suite because these tools are kind of built to work together. But there's other interesting applications in here as well. So say so you have a surface like this one, and let's say we wanted a fence to run along a series of edges, right? So I'm gonna jump into parallel projection mode real quick. Let's say we wanted a fence to run along this series of edges right here. So we would just select them like this. So I've got them on my surface. I would right click and I would put them in a group, same as before, but then we could pick our fence in here. So let's go with, let's go with this horizontal board fence right here, or you could really go with any of these. You could go with the horse fence as well. And then you can just click on the option for make fence. And that's actually going to follow along with that surface. So notice how that adds those in really quickly. All right, so the situation, if we were to run this again, go into the miscellaneous parameters, there's an option here for equalize segments that you can use in order to force a length of segment in here, because you might've noticed when we created this before, it basically created one of these on every one of these points um, or every one of the segments, which isn't necessarily what we want. So what we're gonna do instead is we're just gonna equalize those segments using this tool. So now if I click on make fence like this, Notice what that's going to do is that's going to use, that's going to create eight foot segments in here. Now, one thing you do need to be aware of is you might have noticed this jumped a little bit. Um, it's going to do that if you force it to use eight foot segments, unless this is exactly some multiple of, of eight. Um, so that's just kind of a mathematical thing. There's not a whole lot you can do to get around that. Um, it just kind of is what it is. But um, so you can use this in order to create something that follows along like this. And so in addition to having this follow along with your surface like this, um, there are also options in here and we're gonna pick that back up. There are options in here for fences that actually like step. So for example, this one right here is set as a preset to step. So are these right here. You can also add stepping to an object inside of the setting. But if we do that, uh, we're gonna jump into our parameters right here real quick and we're gonna equalize those segments again. But um, what that's gonna do is that's gonna make your fence actually step along the terrain. So if I click on make fence right here, that's gonna generate that fence and it's gonna step up as we go. So you can use this in order to create a lot of different styles of fence 
really quickly. So note that when you're creating your fences, you can check the box for materials and add any active material that's included inside of your SketchUp model. So for example, right now, notice how there's nothing in here with like a wood material. So what I would have to do is I would have to add that material in here. So maybe using something like just a flat swatch like this. But then let's say I wanted this to just have like the wood veneer material. Um, not ideal for this, but it'll work good as an example. So we're gonna use the wood veneer right here. Now that's in our model. So um, if we were creating this, then we would go into this option right here, check the material and you would go find that wood veneer material. You can also, once something's been created, click on this button right here to switch materials. And then I could go select that material right here. Click on okay and it's gonna apply that material to your object. So leave a comment below, let me know what you think about this extension. So to me, it's just a massive functionality set, which I really love. And then it's got that giant library of rails as well. Um, so for me, I really like using this extension, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below what you think. Big thanks again to my supporters on Patreon for voting on this extension. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.